All right, if you are new here, we are talking about RPGs and board games, currently RPGs, eventually board games. And the idea is that we're trying to figure out what mechanics are really good from those systems so that we can take them, uh, borrow them, and add them into our own RPG system so we can build our own system. Um, I've always wanted to build my own game, so I'm doing it. And we're slowly doing it by first analyzing other games, and then we'll kind of combine them up and see what we can do. Today we're talking about the game Savage Worlds. So what are the things that we like, that I like, Royal We, we what are the things that I like about Savage Worlds that I think is cool and could be added into another game? Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to color coordinate these puppies now. Um, also, starting today, I'm going to put this page here. This is Notion, for those of you who don't know. Um, and I'm going to put it as a shareable link so that in the doobly-doo, as uh, Matt Kolb always says, I'm going to put the shareable link down there so that you guys can go look at this stuff. And you'll be able to click through these and see what are the ones that we've taken so far. And eventually we'll do this for the entire system, the RPG system, when we start breaking down each individual rules. This will be sort of like the hub for the rules. Okay. All right. So what do we like? Uh, I like the wound system, first and foremost. I'm kind of done with uh, hit points. You might have heard that when I was looking at Fate Core. I'm kind of over it. Um, it's it's great. I just think that sometimes it could be a little bit... I think it would be more fun. I think there's other ways to do it. And the wound system in Savage Worlds is one of those ways that's pretty awesome. So in essence, you have... Um, you have four wounds, right, in, in this system. You have four wounds to give. That's it. If you take four wounds, you're out. But they first have, and, and the way you take runes, we'll talk about how you roll, and that's called raises. Whoops, raises. So in essence, if someone hits you, and this is not a d20 system. This is a, like a, it's every other polyhedral dice. It's d4s, d6s, d8s, depending on your attribute and your abilities or the weapon that's being, the weapon damage, etc. cetera. Um, if anyone gets ever a four, is a success. And then every four steps above a four is a raise, okay? So if I roll, and, and dice in this game also explode. So let's take that into account. Dice explode, a four is a success. Every four above a four, every increment of four above a four is a raise. So if I roll a d6 and I roll a five, that's a success, but it's not a raise. If I roll a d6, I get a six, I roll that d6 again. I now get a five, so that's an 11 total. That is a success with one raise because it is above a four, which means it's a success. It's an increment of four above that, which means it's a raise, but it's not another increment above that, right? If it were a 12, that would be a success with two raises. Now. In this game, for the most part, you have what's called shaken and wounds, right? And what this is, is that you have three wounds to give and then you're dead. Uh, but what they have in this game is, is what's called shaken, which is a status that happens before wounds. So if I ever get hit, so say they had that success without a raise, if they have a success, I'm now shaken. Right? If someone now hits me while I'm shaken, if someone has a success while I'm shaken, I'm gonna get a wound, right? And you break shaken on your turn, you kind of just roll. You, you can get out of it, you have to roll, but you can get out of it. Now, what else is, is really cool is that if I am shaken, or if someone rolls a success with a raise, they can both shake and wound me in the same damage. If they roll a success with two raises, that's shaken and two wounds. So you can have this really bad hit if someone dice explode dramatically. Now, does that mean that every time you're hit with a raise, you're gonna get shaken? No, no. but that's the basics of the mechanics. It sounds complicated. Um, I use Fantasy Grounds when I played this, so it automated it, so that's, that's always fantastic. But it's not that complicated once you actually start playing it, right? So then we also talked about it has exploding dice. So that's already sort of in there. That's pretty nice. They have AC versus toughness. Now, what's cool about this is AC 
is what someone's attack is against, okay? And so that's, they're trying to hit you, right? So you have a really high AC, really low AC, that's their ability to actually hit you. Then you have their damage dice is against your toughness, right? It's the toughness, it's against the toughness which is gonna determine more the wounds, okay? Now, what's cool about this is that you could have, this builds for really interesting thematic sort of monsters or characters that your AC's crap, it's very easy to hit you, but your toughness is through the roof. There was in the in the player's handbook, there's in essence like a kaiju, like a Godzilla type creature, where its AC was pretty much nothing. If you got a four on your attack or higher, you were going to hit it, that's it. However, its toughness was like 49, which means that you'd have to do 49, you'd have to roll a 49 first before even being able to shake it. Because if my toughness is say 11, that means I have to roll above 11 to make it a success. And then I have to get an increment of four above 11 to actually do a wound or whatever the case might be. So toughness versus easy, I like that. I like the idea that you can sometimes be easy to hit, but really hard to hurt, or you can be really hard to hit, but easy to hurt. Like I like that sort of, that's cool to me. Uh, they have a variable initiative order. In this game, they do a deck of cards with a joker and every round the deck of cards gets drawn out to the enemies, enemy groups and the players and you determine who goes first. And so at every round it's changing. And they do a cool thing where like the joker, if you get the joker, that gives you bonuses. It's like, you know, really cool stuff can happen if you if you draw the joker. Um, there's also abilities in terms of like switching cards with someone else, etc. So I like the variable initiative order. That's kind of interesting. Um, this game also has edges and hindrances. In essence, it's like edges or feats if you're thinking about 5e, but I think they're a little bit they're a little bit more thematic and the, and whereas feats are a um, in 5e feats are optional or at least you don't have to take them. Uh, in this, they are imperative. They they are like your feats or the edges are the equivalent of feats and features in 5e. They are both the things that are gonna make up your core mechanics for your character and ways to enhance those um, abilities. And then hindrances are actual negatives. But what's cool about this game is that you're gonna start off with say like two, two features, or I'm sorry, you're gonna start off with like four points, right? And, or two points, and every edge costs a point to take. Well, if you take on a hindrance, now you get like two more points. Or you, there's major and minor hindrances. You can take on a minor hindrance and get one more point, or take on a major hindrance and get two more points. Some of those hindrances can be terrible. Some of them can be like blindness. Blindness is a major hindrance, but all of them are very thematic, so I think that this really is a cool way of flushing out your character with these edges and hindrances. Um, this game has binnies. This is the equivalent of your inspiration in 5e or your fate points in fate. Um, but it does some other different interesting things. So yes, it does rerolls, or you can spend one to get plus two to attack someone. Um, you can influence the story. That's kind of like fate. Uh, but the other thing you can do in this is you can do a soak roll. And a soak roll is cool because in essence, it's in this game, there's different attributes. And we didn't talk about the attributes in this game, but the attributes, there's five of them. They're, it's like vigor, um, agility, uh, I forget them all. Uh, vigor, agility, some sort, no, some sort of an L, like, I don't remember what it is. Um, but there's five of them. And what one of them does is it's your vigor. If you take damage, say someone hits you and they got a raise, they got multiple raises, so they, their damage was gonna shake you and take two wounds. You could do a vigor check and say your vigor is a D8. Well, if you get a four, you succeed. And if you go, a increment or raises on your vigor check, you can get rid of X amount of wounds. So say someone hits you and they do um, a shaken and two wounds, 
I roll my d8, I get a seven. That means I was able to get rid of one of the wounds, right? I roll my d8, I get an eight. So I ace it or explode the dice and I get another six. And I'm doing four, I got a 14. That's technically, I get rid of all of it. Nothing hurts me. So really cool that you can spend a Benny to try and absorb the damage that's coming your way, which is really cool. Really neat idea. Um, armor, so they have other attributes. So they have like armor piercing, uh, which for this game, because um, of toughness, that makes sense that you have armor piercing. Uh, because you got to try and get through that armor and actually do damage. It's got um, aiming and called shots. So this is like you can aim so you can take your whole action for this round. Your next action you're getting a plus two to attack or something like that. Um, and then called shots are you can specifically choose areas of the body to hit. I think Dungeon Dragons 2E had that. Um, and this one, if you hit in the head, it does, they get certain conditions. If you hit them in the body, you get certain conditions, etc. So that's really nice. I like that idea. This game is definitely built more around ranged weaponry to a degree. I played it in a system where I had a melee character, which was a lot of fun. But it is very ranged weaponry because there's also a very complex, well, it's not complex. It's just there's a lot of different variables, complex cover system. Um, because otherwise, if someone's shooting at you, they just have to get a four or higher, regardless of anything, to, to hit you. Now, your toughness could be high, but it, so it's very easy to hit someone who's out in the open. So then if they can get behind cover, they can lay down, if they can do all these other things, their the chance of success gets harder. Um, what else do they have in this game? They have the multi-attack. Um, multiple targets. So we talked about this in Open Legend, that I like the idea of being able to take one action and try and make more attacks, because I didn't like the idea that you could only make one attack, and for instance, like 5e as a fighter until you get to fifth level. Like, why can't you recklessly attack more targets, knowing that there's a risk reward, you're pressing your lucks. Um, <clears throat> In this system, the way they do it is that for every attack you make, you get minuses to each attack. So what does that mean? One attack equals um, zero penalty, right? No problem. Two attacks equals minus two to each attack. Three attacks equals minus four to each attack. So now, and it gets harder and harder. I think there's a limit to how many attacks you can make, but now it's it. you can see that risk that you're taking. And maybe this is too easy. Maybe this is too easy to be able to attack two targets right off the bat. I guess it depends on the math of your system. Uh, in a D20 system, that's minus 10%. Maybe you want it, maybe you want it to be you know harder, at, depending on the level of the person. So I like this. I think it's really nice and easy. Simple, now I can make multiple attacks. I can feel more cinematic in my, you know, fighter being able to do all kinds of cool stuff. All right. They do a thing called tests for supports, checks. In essence, a test and a support check is um, a way of giving like buffs or debuffs to either your buddies or the enemy. So tests are ways to debuff the enemy, supports are way to help your buddy. Uh, what these, in essence, end up being is that if you can get a success, you're giving your buddy a plus one. If you can get a raise, you're giving them a plus two. But if you cr critically fail, you're doing a minus two, right? Now it's the opposite for the test. So in essence, if I'm trying to, you know, distract someone, I do a test. And if I succeed, they're getting a minus one. If I get a raise, they're getting a minus two. But if I critically fail, they're getting a plus two. So once again, it's a very quick and dirty way of sort of trying to hinder someone or support your buddy. <clears throat> uh, other things they do, which are cool, they do two weapon versus, so two weapon versus unarmed, meaning that like, or one weapon, meaning that if, if I'm taking on someone and I've got two weapons, and that person is either unarmed or they've got one weapon. 
Now, if they have a shield, that's a different story, but if they've got one weapon where they're unarmed and I've got two weapons, um, even though I, my weapons have a, when I've got two weapons, I've got a penalties to my attacks, I get bonuses if the person doesn't have a way to counteract that, right? So it's like subtracts their AC or something. I forget what it is, but in essence, it makes sense. If someone's coming at me with two swords and I've got one sword, I might be in a disadvantage. So that might be too complex. We might not need to go into that sort of um, detail, but I like it. I think it's thematic. And then finally, they have wild attacks. Whoops, Wilk. Wild attacks, where you get a plus two to attack and damage, um, but you are then vulnerable. This is very similar to uh, 5e reckless attack for the barbarian, right? Where you'd have disadvantage or you'd have, people would have advantage on you. you. You get advantage on your attack, but other people get advantage attacking you. Same kind of concept here. Um, so that's Savage Worlds. I think the only other thing I didn't mention about this in here is the idea that um, they have a cool skill, what is it, attribute skill system where in essence, it's like you've got five attributes and you've got, I don't know how many skills, we'll say like 15 skills and they're all linked to an attribute, just like in, you know, D&D, technically, where you have um, perceptions linked to wisdom, acrobatics linked to dexterity, same thing here. But in this game, you don't have pluses or minuses in the same sense. These are, these are polyhedral dice, so it's, one of your stats is, stats is a d4, one of them's a d6, one of them's a d8, right? Well, you do the same thing for your skills. You say that I want my skill in shooting to be a d8. Well, first I have to go back and look at my agility, and is my agility a d8? Great, if it's a d8, I can rank up my skill in, a, um, in shooting because my agility, which is the linked attribute to that skill, is a d8, I can pump this up to a d8 without ever getting penalties. However, if my agility is a d4, then if I'm going above a d4 in the skill that's linked to that ability, it's harder for me to actually get better. It's like I don't have a, um, I don't have a natural inclination towards that skill. I don't have a aptitude towards that skill. So now it's it's double the points to go up each polyhedral dice. I like that, I think that's cool. I like that it doesn't limit you. You're able to do it still, but you're a little bit of a hindrance. Because then what you do is, when you roll skills, you roll like a d20 um, plus either the skill, like fighting. Um, so fighting can be one of these skills. And so I don't have to just roll my um, might. I think it's might. I don't have to just roll my might to see if I can hit someone. I can roll my fighting, which I can technically be pretty pretty good at fighting, even though I'm not very strong, right? Because I ranked it up separately, even though it costs me more to rank it up. So that's cool. I think that's a cool way of, once again, that's kind of a risk, re re not a risk reward, but that's kind of, um, I guess it's a risk reward. I like that. I like that idea that I could have a, a might that equals D4, but a fighting that equals D10, but, it cost a lot to get here, right? Because now my character, you know, maybe that's like Sherlock Holmesy, where it's like I'm analytical in order to be able to fight with my fists. So, anyways, I think that's Savage Worlds. I think that's it for me. I like Savage Worlds. I think it's got like a lot of cool concepts. Um, I think the next system we're going to talk about is going to be Pathfinder 2E. I don't have a ton to. I don't, well, I don't want to spoil it. Pathfinder 2E. Um, I will see you on the next video. See you guys.